Namaskar and welcome to In Focus. Pakistan's five nuclear tests coming shortly after our own have created a sense of nuclear tension in the subcontinent and many people believe they've also started a nuclear arms race. Today in his first major interview, India's Defence Minister George Fernandes talks about the emerging nuclear situation and talks also about some of the issues connected with India's own tests. Mr. Fernandes, you've had some time now to reflect upon Pakistan's five tests. Are you concerned by the situation that's now developed? Well, I don't think uh, I'm concerned about the situation as such because we had anticipated this situation. When we uh, went ahead with our testing, we were aware of what was to come. So you don't see this as a threat to India, even though it's India-specific? Well, Pakistan has said it is India-specific, but we are not Pakistan-specific. Our concerns are much bigger, and uh, we have acted on those bigger concerns. So at the moment, your response is one of being sanguine and not worried? Yes, we are sanguine and we are not worried. What if Pakistan were to now carry out more tests? What would your response be? I don't think it will make any difference. I, I have, uh, for instance, this uh, morning we uh, got a bit of information that, in fact, there may not have been five tests. And um, the US uh, agency, Central Intelligence Agency, put out this morning a, a piece of information that um, the number five is only to match uh, India's uh, five. How many do you think they actually were? The general feeling is that there was only one. Which they've exaggerated deliberately? Uh, well, I suppose, as the, the CIA put it, uh, match India's five with the figure five. And In fact, that was a phrase used by Nawaz Sharif himself. He said that we've now come even with India. Yeah, that's right. But I have also been told that they may go in for another uh, uh, round of uh, testing. When do you expect that to be? Well, my information is that they may do it any time. Were any of their tests of a nature that makes you think that perhaps, as they claim, their nuclear weapons program is more advanced than us? Well, everything that we have learned about their nuclear tests shows that uh, they are nowhere near where we are. Can you give me some examples of the sort of things that make you feel this? Well, in terms of uh, our tests, we, as you know, went in for uh, the low-intensity sub-kiloton tests and they are uh, the most important uh, tests in any kind of uh, nuclear testing. And has Pakistan not been able to do the similar thing? That's our belief. That therefore any claim they make that they've done sub kiloton testing is one that at the moment you think is mistaken or in fact deliberately wrong? That's the general uh, understanding that we have. Okay, do you think that Pakistan's tests now mean that India needs to carry out fresh tests? No, no. As I told the House today, our, uh, when we went for our tests, we had anticipated this, and therefore what Pakistan was going to do was factored in our uh, tests. So the moratorium stands? As of now, yes. Why do you say as of now? See, one cannot, in, in, terms, of, uh, in terms of a country's security concerns and what a country has to go through. One doesn't say the last word at any point in time. When the Prime Minister said that we are going for a moratorium, well, that moratorium stands. But as you said, as of now. Yes, because that's the statement that the Prime Minister has made, and that's the assurance is given to the world. Not so it's possible that future tests by Pakistan or greater knowledge of what they've been testing and the outcome could make you break the moratorium? Well, I hope that uh, we don't get into that kind of a syndrome where uh, they go for des testing, and then we say, all right, then we let us also go for testing. We don't need to go for any more testing. Whatever we needed to uh, know, we got it. All right, let's, let's come now to some of the other issues that flow out of this discussion. You have said that you believe India should develop nuclear weapons. Is that an opinion shared by the Prime Minister? Well, I can't uh, talk about the Prime Minister's views on this. Uh, but uh, what I have said is that uh, any nuclear test without uh, weaponizing don't make any sense. Do now, whether 
one needs to weaponize in the context of what has happened across the border is a matter on which uh, today in parliament the prime minister has made a public offer to Pakistan that we should sit together, we should talk and we should not get into any kind of a nuclear uh, weapons race. So therefore it's going to be a two-way traffic and I hope that uh, Pakistan responds to the Prime Minister's uh, uh, appeal. All right, let me ask you a blunt question. Has the government taken a decision to weaponize? Well, if the government were to take a decision, it would not want to make a public statement on that. So therefore, this is a question that will not be answered. What is the time frame required between a decision being taken and the first nuclear weapon being deployed? That also, I think, flows from a question which should not be answered in the first place. Could we do it within a matter of months? Well, I suppose uh, th this is a matter on which uh, it is best left to those who deal with these uh, questions on the ground. Let us leave it to them to deal with Okay, you're playing very safe and I can understand the compulsions that are upon you to play safe, but you did in fact say that you believe making nuclear weapons is not just the inevitable next step, you said it was the right step to take. So let me now ask you, as Defence Minister, share your personal thinking with us. What size of deterrent do you think India should develop? You know, Karan, the, um, these are matters which I do not believe can be aired in public what the, uh, in, in, it's a, such a sensitive matter as on date, uh, with the kind of uh, responses that we have had from all around the world, that uh, what uh, India has to do, India must do. Okay. But what it must do is something which uh, must be left to those who have to take those decisions. Don't then share sensitive matters with us, but instead address a concern that was expressed in Parliament and it's been expressed internationally as well. What sort of control and command structures are you devising to ensure that the bomb is always, when it's deployed, responsibly treated and that there's no misuse, there's no accidental use? Well, they'll be the same kind of controls which uh, exist in those countries which have the nuclear weaponry. They can't be any different. Are we going to therefore deliberately copy them? No, I'm making the point that ultimately a nuclear weapon is a nuclear weapon. And uh, any kind of a deployment of a nuclear weapon a, by any country which has a nuclear weapon has to be governed by the same kind of controls. There can't be different controls in different countries. So there will be only one finger potentially on the trigger. That's how it has always got to be. And that will be the prime minister's? Well, in India, the prime minister is the executive head of government and it should be the prime minister and it shall be the prime minister. Let me put something else to you. <clears throat> we're essentially a poor country, but a country where still there are areas of poverty, there are places where people starve. What is this ballpark figure for the cost of creating a deterrent and the necessary missile delivery system that needs to make it effective? I think it is very unfair to the country to discuss uh, the, secu uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the security needs of the country on the basis of uh, how much is it going to cost and uh, where is one going to get the money from and what are you going to do with questions of poverty. It's very unfair to the country because I believe that the security of the country is the most important thing for any nation. And uh, if the country needs uh, money to, uh, to scrape from all over the place, then one has to do it and see that uh, we keep our uh, frontiers safe. Absolutely, security first is something I imagine everyone would agree with, but nonetheless, people want to know what it costs because they have a right to know, and I presume you have a ballpark figure that you could give us. Well, you can't at this point in time do that for the reason that no money has been spent on anything at this uh, General moment. General Sundarji in a report commissioned by Rajiv Gandhi in 1985 had come up with the figure of 7,000 crores in 1985 price, prices for a small deterrent at that time. Thirteen years later, what would it be today? I have not read uh, General Sundarji's uh, book or his paper, but uh, I think what General Sundarji or anyone who gives such uh, figures 
uh, must have meant and would mean is that starting from scratch, a nuclear program, uh, all the scientists, all the technology that goes into Give me it. Mr. Fernandez, but surely not. He was talking about 1985, the first Pokhran explosion was 74. He couldn't have been starting from scratch. Well, he must have been for the reason that uh, in 1985, uh, there was no question of India going nuclear. And therefore, when he was talking about a nuclear weapon, he would have meant starting from scratch, in the, excepting for the fact that you had a technology, that you had proven technology, that you had imploded a device. Beyond that, India hadn't gone very far. Would we, let me put a figure to you, would we need to spend, say, over the next X years, 20,000 crore to create an effective deterrent and delivery system? No, is that I a wrong thing? I, I don't think so, because um, a delivery system is something that you always have. Your, uh, your uh, uh, aircraft are there, your missiles are there, India is producing missiles. So when we talk about a delivery system, that delivery system would be there even if you want to deliver stones. But nuclearizing the delivery system, adding nuclear warheads to missiles. Yes, so therefore we are talk, when you talk of a warhead, then it's just a warhead. And if one wants to add the cost of every missile that goes with it or every aircraft that goes with it, that doesn't really mean anything. So are you saying that in fact we can achieve nuclear weaponization should we decide to do it fairly cheaply? I don't think it is going to be back-breaking. I do not believe that it is going to be back-breaking. Are we talking about an additional 5% of the defense budget, 10, 15? Well, if I give you a kind of a guesstimate, it won't make any sense. Uh, I, and I don't think uh, it's Give us an order of priority. The country f has some right to know how politicians are spending their money. It's taxpayers' money. You have a responsibility to explain. They're not, they're not questioning your right to spend it. They're just wanting to know so that they can understand your priority. Well, that, uh, when, only when you reach that point where that money is going to be spent for the purpose, that one can quantify it. Otherwise, it would be just a guesstimate, and it's neither here nor there. Tomorrow, you yourself will get up and say, but, Mr. Fernandez, you said day before yesterday that this is how it was going to be, and now we find that it is not so. It is half of that. <laughs> Mr. Fernandez, I want to end this part here, but I want to ask a question before I do. People listening to this interview are going to have two thoughts coming through their mind. Has he been told not to say anything and to keep silent and stonewall, or... Is he scared of actually saying what he feels he should, and which he's always shared with people in the past? I don't think anybody need to have either of these two feelings. I'm uh, saying all that I can say, and I'm not saying what I should not say. Discretion, therefore, is clearly the better part of valor. No, it isn't discretion being the better part of valor. But there are uh, moments when discretion is the most important thing. All right, let's take a break, and let's come back and talk about the reasons and explanations for why India carried out its tests. But first, we take a quick commercial break. Don't go away. We'll be back in just a couple of moments. Welcome back. We're talking to Defence Minister George Fernandez. Let me come to something broader that concerns us in this country most of all. In both your national agenda and when you assumed office as defense minister, you very clearly said that India would exercise the nuclear option after a strategic defense review. Did you hold that review? Did you abandon it or did you forget about it? Well, uh, our national agenda said that first we will go in for a National Security Council. And it's the National Security Council that will uh, undertake the uh, review. Now, the National Security Council is yet to be in position for the so reason the that... the review hasn't been held then? So the review hasn't been held. And you've already exercised the nuclear option, therefore, without the review? Well, one exercised the nuclear option for the reason that one felt that uh, the time had come to exercise it. But you did it abandoning the review? The review will have a further look at the whole situation because review is not concerned only with the nuclear question. The review is concerned with the, our threat perceptions. It is concerned with the, the overall uh, security environment in the region, what our role is going to be in this part Can of the I world. Can I interrupt you for a moment and remind you of what you said on the 4th of May yes, I in do. an interview to me, yes, sir, which was recorded two weeks earlier. You yes. said, and I quote, a strategic review has therefore been planned, and if that review, if that review leads us to a point where it becomes obvious that it is time to exercise the nuclear option, then 
we will exercise it. Yes, I did say that, but if one that did not preclude that uh, we would not go in for it without the review. You made a commitment that you would only go in for it after the review. Now you are saying that your commitment did not preclude breaking the commitment. No, doing it before the review. It does not, uh, it did not preclude that. You do not sound as if you have convinced yourself. Absolutely convinced. <laughs> All right, let me then bring something else up. Given that it was important for India to induct nuclear weapons, why could you not have done this without further testing? After all, we would proved our capability in Pokhran in 74. Everyone knew we had nuclear weapons capability. Why then did we have to test and incur the wrath of the world? Well, I think uh, tests were needed. The scientists did feel that the tests were needed. After all, you had not done any testing after 1974, and there had been lots of developments not developments, but lots of development in the, uh, in the nuclear uh, science area and its application, and uh, the scientists wanted to test it. In other words, what you're also saying is that we couldn't have actually developed a nuclear weapon, if we wanted to, without these tests. Our capability established in 74 wasn't sufficient or complete. Well, 74, between 74 and uh, 98, there has been a lot of development in nuclear technology, including the uh, nuclear weapons technology. There has been miniaturization of uh, nuclear weaponry. There has been, there has been a lot of uh, improvement in the technology. And we had to show ourselves that we were abreast of those improvements. Not only ourselves, but we had also to tell the world that uh, we are there. OK, that is very clear. But then, on the 20th of March, which is the day you took over as Defence Minister, in a press conference held in your office, you said... Right here in this hall. Right here in this hall. You said, I do not think we need to test at this point of time. We did a good job in Pokhran in 1974 when India tested a nuclear device. The world knows India has the capacity and capability. We do not need to perform for others. Fair enough. I made that statement. But if the scientists felt that one had to go in for it, what is the, what is wrong with that? So, in fact, the reason we had to test is because of scientific compulsions to prove to ourselves and the world that we really were nuclear capable and not just simply asserting it verbally. Well said. And you agree with that? Yeah. All right. Let me then come to what I think for many people is the <coughs> core question. In his letter to President Clinton, the Prime Minister said, and I quote, that he was deeply concerned at the deteriorating security environment. What is this deteriorating security environment? Well, I think he was discussing the whole uh, environment in this region. After all, um, right around, all around us, uh, we have uh, nuclear weapons, and that has now been established. Yes, but it wasn't established at the point at which you carried out the test. No, that's not right. You were convinced Pakistan had nuclear weapons before they went through the test. Yes. If they were now to increase their cross-border insurgency and infiltration, how would having the bomb help us? Well, the insurgency has to be fought on the ground. I don't think bombs are going to fight. Nuclear weapons are going to fight insurgency. Insurgency has to be fought on the ground. You're not worried that possessing a nuclear weapon may actually provoke Pakistan precisely where you don't want them to interfere further, Kashmir, Punjab? I'm sure they are sensible people. I don't think they are uh, going to do anything foolish. OK, let's come then to China, which is the other country. We fought a war with them 36 years ago. But since then, relations have been increasingly improving year after year. What is the deteriorating security environment there that necessitated nuclear weaponization? Well, improvement of relations is something which one has to do, whether one is a nuclear power or one doesn't have nuclear weapons. And uh, improvement of uh, relations, a constant effort at improving relations between countries which uh, have not been on the best of terms is one thing. And having a certain perspective about uh, your security uh, requirements is another. And uh, when you have nuclear weapons all around, if India believes that uh, its own security concerns require it to possess nuclear weaponry, then that's it. Let me ask 
the question this way. Is there anything that happened in the last six months or two years that made you feel nuclear weapons were necessary? Or is this a conclusion that you've come to because of the way things have been developing over the last two, three, four decades? You see, I'm always surprised when people look at this kind of a thing in a time frame of uh, the last two months or the last two weeks, because some have been talking about the last two weeks, what happened in the last two weeks, or for that matter, even the last two years. The Defense Ministry's uh, annual reports for the last many years have been talking about the security environment and the need to do certain things. Now, I'm making this statement because when one discusses security concerns, the security environment, one also looks at the countries around, their capabilities, and what our own capabilities should be. So in other words, what you're saying is that this is a response <coughs> to a situation that has been developing over a long period of time. It's not a response to any one single recognizable security threat. Except that uh, when people are in government today, they are privy to a lot more information than what they had before they entered the government. Is this what you meant when you said that the reason you've conducted these tests now is because earlier governments hadn't conducted them earlier? Yes, that's what I meant precisely. On that basis, do you think that your predecessors in government were negligent in not conducting these tests? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that because uh, there is now adequate uh, public uh, statement made by various people that at least two former prime ministers, Mr. Narasimha Rao and Mr. Gujral, were uh, on the threshold of uh, ordering uh, tests. But they didn't? Well, they didn't. One didn't order because uh, he wanted to have the delivery system first, according to a very leading member of his party who is concerned with uh, security matters. He and being Mr. Narasimha Rao? Yes. And the other one, uh, his defense minister said that, and he said it publicly, and he confirmed it in parliament yesterday, didn't do it because the elections were around the corner and they possibly couldn't go ahead. But Mr. It. Gujral himself in his speech in parliament turned around and said that your government had tested not for national security reasons but for political reasons, which suggests that when he had to take a judgment in his time in office, he decided for security reasons that he wasn't going to do it. Therefore, I come back to the question, were they negligent or have you overreacted? No, I don't think we have overreacted and I won't uh, charge them with being negligent either. I believe that uh, one had reasons of delivery system and the other had reasons of elections being around the corner. In other words, if the elections hadn't happened, the Gujral government would have been the one that would have tested. Yes, and they would have done the explaining. Finally, what do you say to those who say that developing nuclear weapons is an understandable quest for status, but your government is misrepresenting it as a questionable quest for security. That in other words, you should out outright say India's size, India's importance, India's leverage demands that we be a nuclear power. Don't make it seem as if there's some security threat that's prompting us to do this. Well, I don't think one wants to have uh, a nuclear weapon to show that uh, we are also big and we are also very important and so on. I think a weapon is far more serious and a nuclear weapon is a far more serious thing than that. And uh, no one should have a weapon unless it is required for uh, the nation's security or for an individual security also. You shouldn't be carrying, if you are wa walking in a park where there are doggies or some wild animals which, with whom we may have to tackle, you only carry a walking stick. And as you say, if it's required for the nation's security, you as defense minister are prepared, if need be, to use it. Yes, whatever is needed for the nation's security has to be used and will be used. And I think the chief of our army said that uh, the army always wanted it. The army is happy that it has it. And the army believes that nobody can now push us around. But he also said that, in fact, these weapons are created not to use but as a deterrent. In fact, what I'm putting to you is a deterrent is only meaningful if you're actually prepared to use it. You're prepared to use it, otherwise your deterrent is meaningless. That's where I said that uh, having a test and not weaponizing doesn't make any sense. What you are saying is exactly paraphrasing that. Mr. Fernandez, on that note, thank you very much for talking to InFocus so openly about these subjects at this critical, but for you, no doubt, extremely busy time.
Thank you. That's it for this week. We'll be back next week with another interview. But for today, from the Office of the Defense Minister in South Block, New Delhi, goodbye.